the speed for maximum rate of climb is quite a bit different. That's based on the difference between available power and power required, not thrust and drag. They're related to thrust and drag, but they're not thrust and drag. Now, let's put that into practical terms, because this explains what I referred to as what I think is probably the biggest advantage the early jets have over piston engine counterparts. Most piston engine World War II fighters have their best climb speeds near the best L over D speed, usually within 10 or 20 miles per hour. If you look at the best climb speed for all of the hottest World War II fighters, and I'll just pick one, Corsair, Thunderbolt, Mustang, whatever, most of them have a best climb speed in the 150 to 170 mile per hour range. The Spitfire Mark 14, with a Griffin engine and a five-bladed prop, thing has a top speed of 389 miles per hour at sea level, and a best rate of climb speed of 175 miles per hour. Any speed increase above 175 will decrease the climb rate, which would of course be zero by the aircraft's top speed. Now let's take a look at the P-80. Without drop tanks, the plane has a published best climb speed of 370 miles per hour, at which point it's climbing at 4,300 feet per minute. Very few piston engines could reach 370, mi 370 miles per hour at sea level, and none could manage a significant climb at that speed. Of course, the P-80 can also reach 500 miles an hour, which gives the pilot the option of climbing away from the enemy at 450 miles an hour, far above even the maximum level flight speed of any piston engine fighter down at sea level back at that time. This explains the huge gap in performance created by early jets. Next, let's take a better look at why this happens. Oh, well, before we do that, notice on this chart how a small difference in engine RPM in a jet aircraft has a large effect on performance. That's the way turbine engines work. It seems a bit strange at first. I can recall the first time I ever pushed the power lever up on a turboprop airplane, which is a jet engine set up to drive a propeller. It seemed very strange to me that at 70% RPM, nothing much was happening. But that's the way these engines are. Uh, this chart should give you greater understanding. Remember that thrust horsepower is pretty close to constant with speed. Not quite, but close enough. However, power available goes up with speed, as seen in this chart. Back to our P-80 drag graph, but now let's add power available and power required, which, again, are different from thrust and drag due to the relationship we discussed earlier. I removed 